The Small Business Show, episode 225 for Wednesday, May 29th, 2019. <laughs> And welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show that is by, for, and about small business. Sponsors for this episode include Linode at linode.com slash SPS, where promo code SPS2019 gets you a $20 credit. I'm going to tell you all the things that you can do before you ever burn up that $20 credit in a short bit here. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And out on the West Coast, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you, man? I'm good. Crazy. Uh, yep. <laughs> I realized how comfortable and automatic these podcast intros are for me when while I was saying the intro, somehow I moved my mouse and it logged me out of my screen, like I put on my screensaver. So I had to unlock the screensaver in order to uh, to play the sound at oh. the right time. Yeah, it all happened. Yeah, yeah. That's it's awesome. See, no, no. nobody would have known. I know. That's crazy. That's, yeah. That's how it is most, you know, yeah. uh, most people don't keep track. Most people can't follow along when you make your mistakes, right? No. And it's <laughs> true, right? Like, yeah. like, yeah, yeah. I often say, you know, there's a phrase out there, fake it till you make it. Uh, and I believe in that phrase, except that I define in that phrase, I define making it as realizing that everyone else is also just faking it all the time. And yeah, that's, that's good. Right. And then you have confidence in what you're doing relative to everyone else, which is, it's not, it doesn't matter how you get confidence in yourself. You just have to have it and then you're good to go. And so there, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. And we've talked about that on the show and, yeah. and it's like, it's like if you're doing any kind of performance or speaking or talk, whatever it is, you know, you're going to stumble on certain things, but you know, no one, else but you knows that you made that mistake and that's really important to remind yourself all the time uh, as it will make you more confident in uh, in in what you're doing so it's totally true yeah. yeah and sometimes those mistakes are are actually can enhance <laughs> what you're doing and can be an opportunity to you know interject some humor uh and to, you know kind of break things up for you know everybody listens to people talk and presentations and everything else and you know to to introduce uh, some, I don't know, humanity into it can humanity really go and humility, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and humility. Both. Yeah. 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 That's really good. And, you know, talking, yeah, talking about, uh, you know, presenting to people or working with people all the time, you know, we as b small business owners are constantly persuading people and in, in a good way. Uh, and I, and I thought we'd talk about persuading and, uh, in a, 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 particularly a few tactics today, uh, pacing and leading that can really help you with your customers as well as your employees and vendors and that kind of thing. It's true. And, and a, you know, as kind of the, the parallel to, to your lead in here, it's worth remembering that when you're doing almost anything, especially when you're speaking in front of people, but, but even, you know, even if it's just a one-on-one -on -one conversation, more often than not, everyone is rooting for, for your success. Right. Like no one is sure. sitting there in the audience saying, I hope he fails. Right. It, that's never what happens. And, and if you're talking to someone and perhaps selling something to them or whatever, like if they're listening to you, it's because they want you to succeed in showing them something that's going to make their business better or them happier or whatever it is. There, there rarely are people rooting for you to fail unless you're like, you know, playing on the other sports team or something. But, but other than that, you're, you know, everybody roots for everybody's success th at least yeah. at, at, you know, at a basic level. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think so. I, th I think it makes it. No one, no one wants you to, to, to screw up, you know? And, no. and uh, I, I think that as, as leaders and managers is what we all wind up being as, you know, along the way as becoming business owners. Um, when you're, Working with people, whether it's members of your team, your employees, customers, vendors, you know, you, you have to find a way to create a connection between uh, you and them that allows you to achieve a positive outcome. And, and it's not that y you want to win all the time. As I think sometimes persuasion gets a bad rap in the sense of you, you're not trying to influence people uh, negatively. It, it actually quite the contrary. You're trying to come up with a positive, whether it's a win-win situation, you know, it's kind of a cliche, um, but 
you know what you what you think needs to happen in being able to make a connection and persuade someone and lead them to a conclusion is really important. That's the key. That's right. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, I, and I mention all the time and I'm like a broken record, but uh, I think one of the guys that has a, just a great take on this whole concept is Scott Adams. And, and he uh, has talked about pacing and leading. And, I, and I'll give you a quote that I really like is that, you know, he says, pacing builds trust because people see you as being the same as them. After pacing, a pers- persuader can then lead and the subject will be comfortable following. So uh, let, let's break that down a little bit. You know, pacing does, it builds trust because you're connecting with people in, I think we all do it. We dress a certain way when we're going to different events, right? If we yeah. know it's a and, more formal, you know? Yeah, that's right. It, it and, and by pacing, you know, we, we mean putting yourself on the same track as the person yeah. that you're supposed to be uh be persuading for for lack of a a, a more politically correct sure. term right i mean it, it is what we're doing yeah. but yeah right. yeah making them comfortable making them feel like you're you're with them right it's it's right. that whole uh, which side of the desk are you on are you no we're, we're both together here it's all fine i'm yeah I'm the same as you yeah you can even see it among friends and I mean, I can, you know, I have, I have a pretty broad spectrum of friends and some of them are kind of the wine and cheese crowd. And some of them are kind of the beer. And uh, I don't know what you'd combine with that, but yeah, the beer, beer crowd, let's beer say and pizza and beer. crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Pizza and beer crowd. And I love both of those things, but I do notice that when I'm in those different crowds, I can, okay, well, we're going to hang out this way and do this. And then the other ones, we're going to hang out this way and do that. And you connect better if you don't bring the pizza and beer person sometimes to the wine and cheese event, right? Yeah. No, <laughs> and, that's and, right. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think you do it with vocabulary really, you know, strongly talking and pacing the way someone's talking and it also fundamentally finding that commonality that you can both agree on is, a, is just a great example of pacing, especially when you know you're going to be into a, maybe working your way into some kind of negotiation or a debate. It, if you can first pace a person and come up with something you both agree with, you're going to have much easier time, uh, you know, during that debate, during that negotiation, agreeing on something at the end. Yeah. Cause there's trust there. It's like, okay, well, yeah. I know we're not going to agree on everything, but, but it's clear we already are the same in that regard. And yes. And yeah. And you, and it really, it's, it, it it's a natural thing for us to do because we always te- I I think we always tend to want the other person to feel comfortable. Right. Like that. That's where pace sometimes. Comes. Yeah. Well, sometimes I, I think it, I, let me let me let me walk that back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Our natural inclination when we're amongst other people is to make them feel comfortable with us. That's our natural inclination. I would say that. But I I would agree with you that you are that way. I know I am that way. But I would say there's also uh, people that uh, negotiate and try to persuade by making you feel uncomfortable. But that's an intentional thing, right? I want to I want to separate, oh, separate our, our our natural instinct, right? From just I, I want to make everyone comfortable with me to yeah. I am I am strategically going to make you uncomfortable so that you, you know, sign this deal or whatever it is you're going to do. Yeah. Right. Like that. And there there's a there is a totally a negotiation tactic that that works that way. Many of them, in fact. But I think our, our just as human beings, we naturally will do things to to, you know, uh, uh, make assimilate ourselves into the flock, if you will. Sure. Right. Sure. You know, we we yep. are chameleons in that way at a very basic level. But of course, we can ch- strategically choose intentionally to to not be that way in certain scenarios. But you can also strategically choose intentionally to be more that way. Uh, and, and yeah. pick and choose, you know, how are you going to dress for this? How are you going to, like you said, how are you going to talk? I find when I am talking with younger people, I use the word like a whole lot more. <laughs> no, because yeah. they do. Yeah. It's part of the vernacular. Yeah, it's, that's interesting. It, yeah. it, it really builds that trust. And if you watch two, you know, 20 to 25 year old people, even 15 to 25 year old people speak like is a huge part of it. And it, it's, it's just uh, it's a verbal tick, if you will, but it's a right. it's a it's shared a, um, uh, verbal yeah. tick. Yeah, 
Yeah. 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 No, that, that's, that's great. And that, that's a great example. And, and I think that um, even along that lines, when you use those verbal cues to, depending on who you're talking to, it helps to build credibility with your audience, right? And they are going to take what you say uh, more serious, and and it becomes kind of more authentic because you're you're speaking to them the way that they're used to speaking. That's it. Yeah, uh, it's not so much yeah. a, a verbal tick; it's a verbal cue, is what it is. Yeah. Like I am the yeah. same as you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and and I think that. As business owners in the, in the small business context, we need to be actively doing this when we are working with our team, our employees, uh, and adjusting our vocabulary and maybe, okay, I'm not going to have the business owner hat on right now. I'm going into a meeting with my whoever, uh, and, and I'm going to sit with this group and they kind of have this, maybe they're younger, like you said, and I'm going to use these vocabulary words and I'm going to, you know, try to connect with them on that level. I, I think you have to uh, raise it up from the subconscious to the conscious, or, or if you do, you don't have to, but if you do, I think you will have greater success because, uh, then once you are pacing and they're comfortable and they, they've kind of taken you into their tribe, if you will, even if it's just one person, uh, you can then lead them to achieve, uh, uh, to get to a spot that you want to get to. Uh, and, and it, you know, sometimes I think it sounds like it has all these machinations and we're manipulating, but it's not that it, it is a positive thing. But as a leader and as the business owner, you get to decide what that positive outcome is. Your goal, you know what you want to achieve with your group, your team, that person, that employee uh, by, by using, you know, by pacing and then kind of leading them, you're going to have a much easier time getting to that uh, result. And that person is also going to be happier getting to that result. There's going to be less, uh, you know, kind of uh, bristling back and forth, I think. Yeah. And and I'll, I'll put it another way, just put it in context here. Yes, we are talking about doing this to manipulate people and it's it, it is what's happening. But what you're doing is you're fast tracking things. This is this is sort of how I I think about it. And I'm fast tracking to build trust with these people. And and yes, I may be, you know, manipulating them to build trust in me more quickly than it might otherwise take. But I know that in the end, either way, they're going to trust me because I'm a trustworthy person. Right. So, it, I, right. yes, I'm manipulating you. But really what I'm doing is saving time for both of us. I, I'm not here to screw you. Yeah. I, you're not trying to take advantage no, of them. I'm just no, trying no, to that, save and, some time. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah that's exactly. All. It really yeah, that's no. really what this is about is just how how can we get more quickly to the point where we've got, you know, this shared trust going back and forth. And I will say, as someone who is a natural pacer, a, a friend in high school, uh, he called me this in a musical setting, but really it, it applies everywhere. He said, oh, you, you know, you're the chameleon. He said, you always yeah. fit in whatever scenario you're in. It's like, well, yeah, because I listen, you know, in, in music, we call it big ears, right? Mm, if sure. you're playing music with people, it's much better to listen to what somebody else is playing than to play, you know, something of your own. It's like, listen to them more than yourself. And, and that's, that's true in this environment too. And it's to build that, that shared foundation so that you can move forward together and everybody just trusts everybody. But I will say, as someone who does this and is always working towards trust and assumed trust, if if I am dealing with someone that is not trustworthy, that's where actually where I get screwed, because I assume the trust is there in people that that maybe I should not assume that in. And, and you know, I mean, you realize that and then you get out of it or I get out of it right. quickly. But I, I've gotten screwed a couple of times because I. I always say people will see in others that which they see in themselves. Right. And and so I I really, you know, maybe this is tooting my own horn, but I'm I'm a pretty trustworthy person. It's just easier that way. Certainly, I could go around trying to screw people, but it's a short term gain. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it's just easier to just be the, 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 the rock. Right. Somebody that you can trust. I have extended that trust in the wrong way to some people. I, w I would probably do it over again. I, I you know, yeah, yeah. Cause that, that's that's, just, there's, just I don't here. think there's any way to get around that. No, just because 
Yeah. Yeah. And being being trustworthy and connecting with these different groups, being uh, able to connect with different groups, different people, whether they're customers, vendors, employees, and you are trustworthy. And if they do feel like you are working in everyone's best interest, they may not be, you know, 100 percent thrilled with the result. You know, if you're negotiating a salary for a person or let's say a deal, maybe they don't, you know, you get you you've paced them, you've kind of led them to where you want to be. They may not be a hundred percent happy with it, but hopefully they will understand it and go, okay, well, I get that. They have to make some money or they have to do this. And I didn't get exactly the price I wanted, but we're close and we're going to do more business together because, you know, I enjoyed the process or something like that. Yeah. And because Um, everybody feels like they're getting something out of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that, and I think that's real important, uh, uh, to to understand is you're you're kind of creating this uh, circular process here because if you are if you do pace and lead and it turns out negative really negatively for the other person well there is no circular uh, you know thing that's going to come back next time because next time they're going to be very suspicious right, right. and uh, they're they're not going to be on board with you pacing and leading them down the road because they're going to go oh I got screwed last time this guy did this uh, so you, you need to uh, be transparent and kind of show what you're doing while you do it. But it, it does take a little bit of finesse, but I think if you practice it enough, you can have some great success. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Very yeah. cool. Hey, That's I want to take a minute and talk about our sponsor for today, which is Linode at L I N O D E.com slash S B S where promo code S B S two zero one time two zero one time. Easy for me to say S B S two zero one nine gets you a $20 credit at this, they, they are cloud hosted SSD servers, right? And these servers are fast. Even you can start with a server for just five bucks a month at Linode. And you can do the math there with a $20 credit. You've got five bucks a month, right? You can, you, you can play for a very long time before you have to do anything involving paying. And this really allows you to learn and figure out how this stuff works. But the cool part about Linode is, you know, you get your server, it's a dedicated CPU. You can do distributed applications, hosted services, websites, all with native SSD storage on their 40 gigabit network with industry leading processors. And you can pick from any of their 10 worldwide data centers, including their brand new one in Toronto, which allows them to comply with in-country data protection requirements while taking advantage of all of Linode's technology and tools. And that's actually the big thing here is Linode's technology and tools with their cloud manager. You log in and you say you can say, I just want a, a server and then you log into it and do whatever you want with it. That's totally fine. Works great. But you can also say, hey, you know, I want to set up a VPN server or I want to set up a Minecraft server for, you know, my kids or I want to like they have a bunch of these servers all ready to go. You want to set up a WordPress server that's yours. Boom. You go. You say WordPress. You click. Yes. You give it what password you want to use and you're done. WordPress is up and running. It installs all the stuff you would need, the PHP, the MySQL, all of that and WordPress. And you're up and running without having to have done any of that because they've got it built automatically to do this for you. Again, you can start at five bucks a month because that's the lowest price server that they have. Twenty dollar credit. Visit Linode.com slash SBS promo code SBS 2019. Our thanks to Linode for sponsoring this episode. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, very cool stuff, man. It really is cool. Yeah. Yeah. We all can use a good server. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to bring up too, um, we've talked about this on the show a couple of times, the, this concept of, uh, the two tokens method of customer service. And this was, uh, John Louise Gasset, is that how you pronounce Jean-Louis it? John Louise Gasset, yeah, John yeah. John yeah. uh, former head of I think Apple Europe, and he in, and we'll link in the show notes. And he wrote a great article about uh, pacing and leading in this context. A little different, but you know his concept is that there is only two tokens when a customer service situation comes up, and the one token is 
someone can be can take that says, well, this is really no big deal, and uh, it's, I'm not going to I'm not going to worry about it too much. And the other token is, oh my gosh, this is a you know huge deal, and and you know I'm really focused on it, and I'm I'm either upset or I'm going to take care of that kind of thing. And you get to choose as a customer service person which token you take. So if you take the token that um, it's not a big deal, by the way you're phrasing and talking to your customer and the solutions that you're coming up with, well, they can only take the other token, right. which but is the big person th- has you know. to take a token. Yes. You get to yes. pick which one you take, which yeah. therefore defines which token the other person's going to take. So if you take the it's nothing token, guess you're in what trouble. You've got. <laughs> That's right. You're in trouble. Yeah. yeah. And I think this is a great example of pacing and leading. I thought about it first. I thought it was a little contradictory to what I, I wanted to discuss today. But you really are pacing because you are. Uh, kind of elevating things on your side to let the customer know, wow, this is a big deal for me. And the, the customer's kind of, you know, coming along with you and going, oh, yeah, it is a big deal. They're thinking it's a big deal. So I can I can take a step back right. because someone else has taken this role. And and well, if you then think about you, it you, from a, a pacing standpoint, right, the customer is coming in. It's not really that there are two tokens. There is when the customer walks in, it's awful. Right. Whatever yeah. complaint they have, they're already there. You get to choose whether you pace them or, uh, yeah, there you or go. whether like you that. whether you disagree with them. Right. And and and, yeah. and go counter to their pacing. So the, and, and to your point, right, once you now are pacing them with the oh, yes, I agree. This is awful. You can actually go a little bit further on the this, it's awful scale. That's what Jean-Louis Gasset used to do. He used to say, great, we'll send you a box and a check. Just send us the computer back. And they'd be like, whoa, yeah, uh, no, no, Not. slow down, buddy. And, and yep. now you're slowing down together to a point yes. where, you know, and, and again, but you're still pacing the customer down. If you can get the customer all the way down to where they say, you know what? I didn't even need to walk in here. Nothing's wrong. Well, that's great. Most of the time, they're not going to go that far down, but you just follow them down to as far as they can go once they know you're with them. And it is. It's that two sides of the desk, right? Are you sitting yes. together or are you sitting across from each other? It really you're right. It is. This is a classic example of pacing. It just seems yeah. like it's not because you're right. There's sort of this false. There's this straw man of this other token that doesn't exist. And if you try to make it exist, that's when you have a problem. When you try to say, oh, it's nothing. Yeah. Good luck yep. with that. Yeah. You, you've blown it. You've and blown and it. I and I love that analogy of the, you know, both sides of the table. The minute you. You know, if you accelerate it and and, you know, oh, wow, this is a big deal. We're going to get this taken care of. You know, I'm, I'm really focused on it. I'm, you know, whatever uh, with you. Yeah, I'm with you on this. You've you've gotten up and you've gone on the same side of the table with them. And they know I think they the feeling is, OK, like to your point, Dave, we're going to get this solved together. And you can do that with everything. You can do it with, you know your customers in, in customer service like this, you can do it with your employees because when you do a review or you're negotiating salaries or, you know, this kind of thing or trying to hire somebody, you can do it together. You don't have to be, you know, okay, I'm on this side, you're on that side. So I'm trying to get something in, in order for me to get it. You have to give something up. It doesn't need to be that way. Um, and, the, and the same with vendors. If you're negotiating deals, you, you want to have, uh, I mean, unless you're, you're sure it's only going to be one time you ever deal with this person, which I just don't think happens. Uh, y- you want them to feel good when they're done. Even if you've got the greatest deal ever and you know you want it, uh, you feel like you won the negotiation. You want them to come back to you and you have to That's the whole pace point. and lead them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, this circular thing. You either want the customer to come back to you because, you know, they feel like you you listen to them. You had this is a really important part of it. You had empathy for their problem. And one of the ways that I, I, I think it's a, a good method to pace your customer when you're dealing with these problems is to really focus on that empathy and even use an example where perhaps you had a similar experience and you don't have to provide a lot of detail, but even something as simple as, you, you know, saying a, a phrase is, you know, I know how frustrating it is when X happens because I've had it happen to me. My package didn't show up on time, right? If right. you're 
you know, logistics company or sending out e-commerce things and somebody was waiting for something or my package was lost or my thing was broken or it didn't didn't work when I got it. If you know, if you get them on your side, if you're, you know, a little little quicker by, you know, having that empathy and using the example of when it happened to you, I think you can be far more successful in your your negotiations. Really, it comes down to listening to people and you can practice this all day long. I, I My grandfather was the master of this, but I didn't realize it at the time. But, it, you know, I always used to say he had the gift of gab. He, he what he had was the gift of listening. Uh, but he could talk with anyone, but it was because people wanted to talk to him. And the reason they wanted to talk with him was because he listened to them and engaged with whatever they were going through. And then That's he great. would slowly, you know, kind of lead them to whatever he wanted to lead them to. Uh, and, and my grandfather was a he was an inventor. It, you know, I think I've mentioned it on the show those um, those binocular viewing machines that you see all yeah. over the country. He invented those. That's awesome. And, and uh, yeah. And, and he then went around the country and, and because if you invent something, that's great, but that doesn't actually pay the bill. You got to sell it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. So he went around the country and, and would like, you know, replace all the other ones that these people had from different folks that weren't taking care of them for them and, and go and do it. But it was because he listened and, and I catch my, I learned a lot of this from him just via osmosis, I think, but you can, you can practice this. For example, show up at the doctor's office, right? And you get to the receptionist and, in, in, you know, invariably this person is frazzled, right? By two in the afternoon, whatever it is, things have gone sideways. The schedule is all screwed up and everybody that gets there is focused on themselves and they need to be seen. And it's this person's fault that the schedule screwed up. And nine times out of 10, of course, it's not. But even if it is, well, you know, you can you can yell at them or. You can empathize with them. Now, you can't right. necessarily empathize over the schedule, but invariably they'll say something like, oh, man, my computer's being so slow. And it's that that's my in. It's like, oh, don't you hate that? Gosh, yeah, these things. That's right. And, and now you're in a conversation about something that's impacting their day and you're you're empathizing. They know that you're you're able to, you know, understand like, yeah, when are these things supposed to where's all the time we're supposed to get back from these things? Now, of course, we could talk about all the time computers have actually saved us. That's not what that person wants to talk about at that moment. Right. They want to talk about how frustrating this thing is. It's like, yep, man, you know, I thought our lives were supposed to be so much better with these. Gosh, it's so frustrating. I know. And now suddenly they're your best friend. And it turns out that a not only is that a nice thing to do, because now you've sort of cheered up this person and maybe brightened their otherwise gloomy day. But if they get to pick whose chart goes next, it might just be yours. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's a great example. And I I do this all the time when I get on an airplane, I I start talking with the flight attendants, but I don't yeah. tell them what's going on with my day. I ask how their day's been. And and I yep. listen and then say something quick and then go sit down at my seat. I'll tell you uh a handful of times I've gotten upgraded to first class. Uh another handful of times I'll be sitting there and they'll come and bring me they'll ask me uh, you want a meal like we've got an extra meal from first class do you do you want that Nice. You know, like yeah. all kind of, they'll bring me drinks and it's just because I speak with them I don't do it in order to get these things out of them I do it because they're humans and it's it's good it's nice to talk to them but it's also just good practice to do this all the time it because is. then it's so natural when you are in the pressure situation and it does matter well, at least you're used to, you know, the small talk, if you will. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's is, powerful. Is the important stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I th and I love, you know, you bring up, the, you know, asking questions to them, that kind of thing. And, and that is a technique I use all the time, because sometimes when you get in a group that you're not familiar with, you don't quite know how to start things. And questions are the absolute best fallback way to learn about a person or a group to where you can start pacing <laughs> and leading and getting things going, even if it's just casual, but you want to engage with them and make those connections and questions are a great way to do it, especially if you don't know how to open a conversation. Oh, you know, what's your name? What do you do? Who do you know here? You know, how, how this kind of thing, just simple questions that lead to more questions and Everybody likes to talk about themselves. I don't it, care who do. it is. And, right? and, and so do you. I, I mean, yeah, I, I don't just mean you, but I, I, yeah. I do <laughs> yeah, I like yeah, right. talk about myself as well. But yeah. in, in those environments, it's better to let them start. I, I go to these, yep. you know, these press events or whatever. 
And you can tell who the seasoned press, you know, uh, like successful members of the press are uh, and who the, the, you know, the, the absolute like, you know, failures are by listening to what they say to, the, you know, some vendor. It's like, you know, some hard drive vendor or whatever. Right. You know, and they're just there to tell you about their new whatever the new size of drive is. You go up, you say, hey, cool. What do you have going on? And then you stop talking and listen. Yeah. That's that leads to success. I've seen people go up and say, so, hey, oh, you're uh, you know, Western Digital. You know, I have a few of your drives and man, I've had these problems with them. Can you help me with uh, this? Like, right. it's like, what? Like, no, no, no. They're not. These are not the people that are going to help you down the road. That's no, right. No. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so the, qu- the question is just a great way to break the ice to. And, and I think you can also you start to gauge their responsiveness. And I always, you know, when, when I'm meeting people for the first time and I'm asking these questions and all that kind of stuff, I think you can really tell, like, do they ask you questions back? Because often you you'll do it and they won't. And it's like, uh, okay, that that's that kind of person. But then if you, you really are fortunate, you know, and you make a connection and then they start asking you questions back and forth, y- you can, I mean, you know, create some great new relationships. It is an easy way to connect with people when you're all standing around. And let me tell you, it beats, you know, staring at your phone and you never know where it's going to lead. You just never know, you know, and, and you, those, the connections are, are just critically important to our, uh, not just our success as business owners, but just mentally in, in our, our social, uh, you know, network and this kind of thing, how, how we interact with people. It's really uh, important. And I would highly encourage you to get out there and, you know, pace some people, practice, actively think about what you're doing. Think about a win-win that you're trying to achieve with people and uh, focus on pacing and leading to help you succeed. I think it'd be, and, and then let us know how, how it works for you. You know, uh, feedback at businessshow.co. We would love to hear from you and uh, share your stories or come over to the small business support group at businessshow.co slash Facebook. Thank you for listening. We really appreciate it. Yeah, such good stuff, folks. And of course, thanks to Linode at linode.com slash SBS. Get that $20 credit with SBS 2019. And you can lead the charm life with your own server. It's awesome. See you next week. 